C plus 4. Work on that one. I'm going to write one more on the board for you. May take care of that afterwards. By the way, make a note if you'd like on, on your home or on your, your notes right now. Some of these problems are going to show up on your second test. For sure, you're going to have some of those problems. If you need help, let me know. Now's the time. I'll be walking around. Lots of good work. Make sure you circle the number in front of the parentheses with the sign and take that to both of those turn to the side. We're going to get going about 30 seconds, so try to wrap these problems up. Hey, by the way, is it okay to have more than two like terms at a time? Yeah. I hope so, because that's what you should get on the first problem, right? Yes. A few C's there. If you're having trouble with those, those C's that you have, do them two at a time. That's fine. All right, let's see what we have on this problem. What are we going to do with that 8C? Does that do anything at the beginning of our problem here? No. All right, let's just bring that on down. What are we going to distribute with our second or our first parentheses? The negative 4 with the... 3C. Great. So I'm circling that negative 4. When I distribute it, I hope on your paper you got the correct answer, which is negative 12C, and then what? Positive. Plus Positive. or minus 32? Positive. Positive. Good. Yeah, that's perfect. And then over here on our second set of parentheses, yeah, it's minus 5C because I'm going to distribute that negative 5 to both those terms. So minus 5C, and then lastly, what are we going to get? Positive uh, plus 20. Plus or minus? Careful on that. I need oh, a yeah. show of hands, how many we've got exactly on our paper. Good, good deal. Remember how to do this when you get your homework and your test, you're going to be just fine. You okay? Okay. Lastly, we'll combine some like terms, but when we look at our like terms, not only do we see an 8C, not only do we see a minus 12C or negative 12C, we also see this negative 5C. It's okay to have more than two like terms at a time. Uh, what you can do is, if you're very good at the addition rule, just do this one, leave it in your head, and then Stick this one on the side afterwards. Or you can do this part first and then combine like terms afterwards. I'll show you that way so you really see what I'm doing here. So if I combine these, of course, 8C and negative 12C gives me negative 4C. You with me on this? Then I'll have the plus 32 and the minus 5C minus 20. If you haven't already taken care of the 5C, now you can do it in this step. We have our minus 4C. We've got our minus 5C. Same sign. Add them together. Keep the common sign. You get negative 9C. And the numbers, the positive 32 and the negative 20, that's going to combine. They have different signs. Subtract, sign of the bigger number gives us plus 12. Plus 12 is the right one. That's as far as we can go. Did you make it that far? Good deal. Yeah, I like it. OK, last problem, perimeter and area. Are we going to subtract the 6 minus the 4? Is that the first step that we should do? 
Now, now of course not. Our multiplication comes first, order of operation stuff. So the 6 will leave. Negative 4 gets distributed. We should be getting negative 8x and positive 4 or plus 4y. Did you get minus 8x and plus 4y? Good deal. Then we'll distribute our positive 3. We'll get plus 3x. We'll get minus 12y. And all that's left to do is combine some like terms and we're done. The 6, we really don't have any like terms with that, so we're going to keep writing that 6. We do have the minus 8. We do have the plus 3. I almost said plus 3. Plus 3x. What do we get? Minus 5x. So those are gone. And lastly, we got a 4y minus 12y. What do we get of that one? Negative 8y. Sure. Can we combine any of this stuff? No. You check. You double check. But no, we can't. We're going to go. It's as far as we can go. Do you feel okay with combining like terms like this? Distribution yeah. combined like terms? Good. All right. Let's see if we can apply this to two quick problems and we'll call it a day today. All right? Do you remember what perimeter means? Around. Say that again? When you add the distance around. Right. So like the perimeter of this room would be if you walked around this room, right, and added up how many feet you walked. It's like we did this example earlier. It's how much baseboard you'd buy for your, your house, right? If you were doing baseboards at your house, baseboards would be your perimeter. Uh, how much feet you're going to have to go down to Lowe's or Home Depot, hopefully Lowe's, because Jimmy Johnson, you know, Lowe's, whatever. Yeah. NASCAR, anybody? Yeah. Any, nothing? Yes. I don't like driving my junior they drive on road courses too. They make rights and stuff. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. So you go down to Home Depot or Lowe's, you get your baseboards, that's a perimeter. If you were trying to re-carpet your floor, that's a surface area. So the area would be the length times the width, the perimeter would be you add up all the distance. Let's see if we can do a perimeter on this figure. Let's see. Refresh my memory. What's perimeter mean again? Space. What was it? What this is around. Well, what's our total? You add the sides. You add the sides. Yeah, that's our total distance around. Can we add these sides up? Yeah. yeah. yeah even though there's x's, that's not a problem for us. Let's see if we can add these up. Uh, in order to do this, what's my expression? I'm going to have to write. Five x plus four x plus three x. Sure. So each of my sides, I have 5x, 4x, 3x. Let's add those all, those all up together. How much are we going to get? That's our expression for the perimeter. So even though you don't get like a whole answer, like uh, 34 feet or something like that, we have this in terms of x's. So this depends on how much we plug in for x, what our perimeter is going to be. But using the variables, it's, it's fine. We just add those sides up just like we would for any other perimeter problem, and we're good to go. Let's say you had a room. This is, this is supposed to be a rectangular room. Let's say that this is uh, 12 feet and this is 8 feet. 12 feet and 8 feet. What's your area? How much is that? 96 feet. 96, 96 what? Square feet. Oh, remember about the square feet? We had square units on that? This would be 96 square feet. Could you find the perimeter? Yes. Is the perimeter 20? No. No. What is the perimeter? Why isn't the perimeter just this plus this? Because you need to add all Oh, okay. So if you're given two sides in a rectangle, you need to know that we're adding all four of those sides up for perimeter. Area, however, is just this length times this height. Let's see if I make this a little bit different, if we can solve it the same way. So let's say this isn't 12 anymore. Uh, this is, let's make it 10 to make it nice. And this isn't 8 anymore. This is 2x minus 1. Can you find the area? Yes. Okay. I'm still listening to you, Rachel. I got you. Yeah, for sure. Just like this was 12 and that was 8, we multiply 12 times 8, right? Now it's 10 and 2x minus 1. The operation of finding area doesn't change. The values change. We have a variable now. But hey, 
that is 10 times 2x minus 1, right? That's, how, that's this representation. Can we make this a little bit simpler? Can we simplify that? Yeah, we just spent the whole time doing that. How would I do it? What's that word, by the way, that you're using to multiply? Distribute. Distribute or distributive property or distribution. That's what we're doing. Very good. So we circle that number with the sign that's positive. So we're going to get what out of that? 20. Yeah. We're done. That's the expression that we'd have for area. Again, it's going to depend on how much x is to whether we can find actual area or not. Um, this would be square units of whatever units they give you on the problem. Would you raise your hand feel okay with distribution and perimeter and area? And you had a question. Um, for the 3x and 4x, are there, to yes. find the area for that, would you multiply all of them? For the, for the area? Yeah. For the area, that would be a different formula. Uh, we're not quite there yet. When you find that, you want to see it right now? The area of a triangle, what you'd have to find is this height. Based on yeah, and what you do for a triangle is you take the base, 5x, times the height, which isn't 3x. It's going to be a little less than 3x. You'd multiply those things, and then you divide it by 2. Uh, because a triangle is basically half of a rectangle. That's the, the theory that you're using on that thing. So we're not quite there. We might get there someday. Good question, though. Any other questions? All right, guys, we're going to end there today, but hang out. <laughs>